It's been six months now since I cack handedly ceramic coated my car outside in the sun, so I thought before the grim winter weather sets in, I'd do a maintenance wash and ceramic top up video to let you know how the Avalon King Armor Shield 9 is holding up on the non garage Nismobile. So the now four year old 8000 mile 370Z which generally doesn't get too ingrained in between its bi-weekly maintenance washes was definitely still sporting enough dirt here to warrant a good multi-stage pre-winter ceramic spruce up and with a nice haul of Avalon King's latest and ziploc greatest to hand including their brand new Boost Topper Spray thought it would be rude not to. So sit tight for another sunny session on the front where I'll be attempting despite the numerous annoyances filming on a suburban thoroughfare entails to thoroughly get a grips with my own pride and joy for a change. So first up for the Nismo was a multi-stage maintenance clean of its non-factory candy red rims which will be staying in situ for the winter as I feel it's my duty as a local YouTube celebrity to brighten up the roads a bit during the more miserable months so gave them an initial rinse to remove any loose potentially abrasive dirt before foaming them over with the Avalon King maintenance shampoo to encapsulate and soften up what remained. And while I'd normally do this with a dedicated snow foam, thought it made sense to use the shampoo here as it's uh, what I have mixed up in the wheel bucket too. Once sprayed down and lubricated then, the open-ended aluminium nuts and other areas of the wheel's faces were first tickled over with a super soft shampoo prime detail factory brush which is always a pretty satisfying affair before a similarly super soft wheel or finger wash mitt was also worked over for good measure. The barrels were then tended to with, yes you've guessed it, a super soft wheel woolly brush to ensure they didn't let the side down. Then once all the painted parts had been sufficiently maintenance washed, the tyres were moderately worked over with a slightly coarser, more traditional detail and brush to ensure they were as clean and fresh as the wheels. All areas were then thoroughly rinsed off to remove the suds and any light dirt encapsulated within them. And because the wheels had been coated with the Armour Shield 9 along with the body back in April, were still repelling water nicely which meant they could be blow dried in a contactless fashion later on, saving time and potentially avoiding unsightly swirls. The body was then sprayed over with the shampoo and while I don't usually bother pre-washing it was a bit more bird bombed out than usual here so thought I better had. And although it wasn't a dedicated long dwelling snow foam, the looser shampoo suds were still capable of soaking into the nooks and crannies and accessing dirt the swipe of a frothy wash mitt might not. So coated the car in a thin layer of Avalon King shampoo via my heavy duty foam lance before going on to rinse it off from top to bottom. Once thoroughly pre-cleaned and pre-rinsed, it was time to contact wash the car using Avalon King's oversized chenille mitt, which is probably one of the best of its kind I've ever felt.
After it had been used to wash a section, it was rinsed out in the fresh water bucket to keep it free from abrasive dirt, then reloaded with suds in the wash bucket before continuing on. And for any areas where an extra large wash mitt like this might struggle to access, a dedicated soft exterior detail brush was used instead. Now, when it came to final rinsing, there didn't appear to be much repellency from the previously applied coating, but because it had been beading and sheeting previously, hadn't preemptively set aside the time or appropriate products to effectively reset it here. But the unforeseen benefit of this was I now had a fair few seemingly non-hydrophobic surfaces on which I could test the capabilities of the new Ceramic Boost product. Once thoroughly washed and rinsed, it was time to dry the car, so used a heavy twist loop towel to absorb what slowly sheeted rinse water remained on the body. Some general purpose towels to tend to the chunky shuts, and a blow dryer on the still hydrophobic wheels, and cracked on with that for 15 minutes or so, until all parts of the freshly cleaned car were rinse water free. Next up then was to treat the car to Avalon King's brand new ceramic boost product which despite its high silica content of 20% can still be applied to pretty much all of your car's exterior surfaces. It comes with a soft applicator pad which once primed with the product was worked over the surface in a crosshatch pattern to ensure even and adequate coverage. Once applied, it was then swiftly buffed off with a couple of Avalon's nice plush towels, as while these kinds of products are generally pretty easy to use, didn't want to tempt my outdoor working fate, even if it was only mild mid-October sun I was working in.
Once the body and glass had been sufficiently boosted, I treated the wheels to much the same, using the microfiber pad for the wide barrels, but employing one of Avalon King's general purpose towels for the faces to more easily access the nooks and crannies. Although they were still rocking plenty of the previously applied ceramic protection, we'll no doubt be seeing a fair bit of road salt and traffic film in the coming months, so it made sense to quite literally boost what was already there in preparation. Lastly, as the tyres weren't to be dressed here, as I didn't want them outshine and the rest of the car gave their rubberized white letter in a once-over with Avalon's new IPA prep spray instead to at least put that to some sort of test, as I found they can discolour a bit after being dressed and an isopropyl alcohol product seems to be the best way to brighten them up without leaving any smeary residue behind, so ironically finished up with a product designed to be used much earlier in the detailing process, but it seemed to do the job just fine, so called it a day. Once it had, as I certainly wasn't going to get a better part in action shot than this. So after a fair few hours worth of washing, wiping, buffing and finger fettling, the Zed's white panels were now quite literally glowing. The slick suds used earlier worked well from the wash buckets and their cleaning capabilities were definitely enhanced by the chunky chenille wash mitt and the concentrated but easy to use boost spray which is worth mentioning is only available in the US and Canada had definitely brought the Bird Bomb 370's protection back to life as could be seen the following day when I repeatedly hit it with the hose pipe and blow dryer much to the neighbour's bemusement. While my lack of initial hydrophobicity here was unplanned, if your coated car suddenly fails to repel water, even if the surface still feels slick, aside from fully resetting it, it's good to know a simple ceramic infused spray like the Boost featured here is capable of stepping in to thoroughly rejuvenate it for months at a time. So hopefully you're as happy to see the Nismo for the first time in six months as I was to clean it in three weeks. Granted it wasn't as manky as some of the cars featured on the channel, but it was definitely dirtier than a lot of other folks who don't seem to take the flack I do for featuring well-kept cars. But all I can say is to try and appreciate the quality shots instead of getting your knickers in a twist. Joking aside, cheers for tuning in as your loyal views are always quietly appreciated, as are your thoughts. So feel free to share your pre-winter car cleaning or ceramic coating rejuvenation routines and tips in the comments below.